So today I wanted to do a quick little tutorial on Mineways and just how to use the basics and one or two clever things you can do along the way. The, uh, the main thing to keep in mind with Mineways is that you are trying to think about 3D printing and, uh, and what you're actually going to see when you make this 3D model. So here's this little place called the Adobe Abode and I thought I'd pick that as our, uh, as our little test model here. And for the most part it's pretty open and uh, you know it's the kind of place that you can look inside there's lots of nice windows so this this room right here is a you know is a room that you could look inside and see so that's the kind of thing you want to print the uh, the questionable room here is this one which is downstairs you know in the basement and uh, has some tunnels out of it and so on but you're really not going to be able to see this once once you print it and so that can cause problems in the 3d printing uh, area because basically the way the the printer works is it kind of lays down this sand and it solidifies it in various areas and the point is is that this whole area here will get filled with sand that's not solidified and that needs to be vacuumed out however the holes are pretty darn small and so it's going to be difficult to vacuum out all that sand um, and it's just a waste basically there's no reason to be printing that area down there uh, well so let's let's uh, for starters actually I want to let's see let me just get out here and look around for a sec Okay, so let's go to the Mineways program itself and load up this this world. Um, so now I've loaded up the world, and I know where this Adobe Abode is. So I just left to drag. I'm just clicking and dragging, and that brings me to the area. And then I'm using the uh, mouse wheel to zoom in on it. So here I've got this area that uh, is you know is where I want to do. Uh, my my export. So what I've done is now clicked middle clicked in an area that's a, a little bit down the hill from this this building and now I'm sort of right dragging. I'm basically right clicking and dragging out and you can see a sort of funny thing that I'm not getting a nice square when I drag out but I'm getting this odd shaped thing and that's because what you're doing is you're trying to select a 3D area. You're trying to select a 3D box, you know, so it has a height. This box, you don't want to have it go all the way down to bedrock. So when you middle click on a place, that's basically saying, I want to make that area the bottom of my box. So here I'm going to click over in this corner and you'll see, sure enough, that's now established that the bottom of the box is much further down. It's uh, now going to encompass this whole area. So let's just export and show what goes on with that uh, that basement room. All right, I've exported, and if I go look now, this is this is where the file just got created, and I'll uh, now I'll bring up the SAP Viewer Complete. Um, this SAP Viewer Complete is something that uh, you'll see a link on the Mineways page for it, and uh, basically it's a very nice little previewer. It's free. Um, make sure that you download the complete version. Some people have gotten problems by uh, downloading the minimum version, which doesn't read the, these uh, files. So anyway, here's the here's the model that we just exported, and you'll notice some funky things like. Um, because there's, uh, I have hollowing on, which basically hollows out the bottom of the model, since you don't really need to see the, you know, pay for all the material in the bottom of the model. Um, but it doesn't quite do everything that you uh, want to hollow it out. You know, there's sort of this whole tunnel system, which is kind of cool, but uh, but a problem with this whole model is that, um, you know, like I say, there's sort of that downstairs basement. And so let's just show that basement. Uh, let's see. So this basement here is, you can kind of see it right here in the middle, is that uh, this, you know, as you as you slide through this thing and see the cross sections, you can see this basement area. It's just sort of this big enclosed area. Um, if we got rid of that basement, we could use less material. We wouldn't need all this stuff. And, uh, and also you wouldn't have that problem of clearing out an area that has uh, extra material in it. So um, anyway, so how do we do that? Well, you could actually go in and uh, manually, you know, fill in the basement. You know, go in here and uh, just start laying down blocks of dirt and fill in that whole basement. But that's that's a giant pain. Um, luckily, there's a feature that can help with this. Uh, basically, what you need is kind of seal off the entrances to the basement. If you can make the basement just a total bubble, like a, something that's totally enclosed by uh, dirt or whatever, then 
uh, mine waste can seal off that area and uh, fill it up and get rid of it, basically. Um, while I'm here, I thought I'd show sort of a cool feature, is that uh, you can interactively actually change your world. So let's say I lay down some torches here. Yeah, okay, good enough. And uh, if I go now here, you know, I'm obviously not seeing the torches. However, if I reload the world, just reload it, now the torches have appeared. So, you know, your world is live, and whatever you do in your world, you know, all you have to do is, you know, change your world and then just reload, and uh, you'll be able to, you know, uh, basically make changes and immediately see the results in Mindways and you won't lose your selection, and you won't lose your view, or any of that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's just a little side feature. I don't really need that today, but I thought I'd show it off because it's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, I, in fact, I don't need to do anything else to this model. So let's, uh, let's go back to Mineways, and we'll just export again, but this time we're going to use some different options. So same model. The two things I'm going to do, the major one is seal off entrances. What that does is it says, well, if I see a door or if I see torches or if I see, you know, any kind of sort of minor item like um, basically doors, um, railways, uh, ladders, and in this case ladders is the important one, is because we have ladders going into that room, that basement room from above and below. So this will seal off that entrance. And uh, let's just do that. And what have we got? Um, let's reload the model. And now you'll see when we look underneath that uh, we've gotten rid of that basement. You can see the basement's all gone and um, you know it's actually sealed. The uh, This glass is just uh, sort of the sealant that I use. I sort of fill in any bubbles with glass just so you sort of know where they are. Um, you normally don't really see much of that from above. So anyway, so we've gotten rid of the basement. There's still this piece sticking out here that doesn't look so great and uh, you know, unless you really like this kind of weird, weird looking little piece, there's no reason to have that at there. So the other option that is commonly uh, worth worth using is this fill in isolated tunnels in base of model. Um, and what that does is, well, you'll see in a sec, what that does is it's now filled in this tunnel. So that tunnel was uh, was right here, and uh, I filled it in with glass again. And now if you look underneath, it's gone. That piece is now gone. What's happened here is that basically by sealing off the tunnels and by sealing off this basement, it allows mineways to go and look underneath and just chew away all the stuff that you're not going to see. Um, and this is a really good thing as far as just saving you money because you, you don't have to pay for any of this material. All these models are basically based on cost. You know, it doesn't matter how complex it is. It's the uh, it's just the raw material that you use is what your cost is going to be. And in fact, there's kind of a cool thing you can do to see what the cost is in advance. So I've uh, I've loaded this model into into a little notepad. You know, it's just a uh, a nice text editor. And um, by opening adobe.wrl, you can go and look at it's just a, a text file. You know, there's there's all this uh, crazy data down below, but here you can actually look at a bunch of interesting and useful information. So here the key thing is, is gee, how much does it cost? And uh, this is surprisingly accurate. Um, anyway, the uh, put the equations in, and, and indeed this is about what it's going to cost to run, you know, to make this model. Um, so that's about it. I just wanted to show, you know, the basics here. This uh, this has all kinds of other interesting information. If you ever want to, you know redo a model and you don't remember what you did to get the model originally. It tells you all the coordinates, it tells you all the options you used, and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's about it. Um, I think I'll probably continue this uh, video with a little bit about the Shapeways uh, upload. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Well, actually, I'll do the easy thing for the Shapeways upload. The uh, The easy thing is just to, that you want to go into the wherever you've made these two files, and you just put them in a zip file somewhere. And that's it. Um, you want to make sure to put both of them in. Some people have only been uploading the WRL file in a zip file. You want to put both of these files in. This texture file is what's giving the whole the whole model some texture. It's giving it its colors. So this is the guy we're going to upload. So to upload, um, we've shown this before in another video, but I'll show it again. It's just you go, you pick the zip file, 
And that's really all you need to do. You can change the name if you want. And uh, then upload. But you can always change that later, so it's not a big deal. And I'll be back in a minute after it's uh, uploaded and processed by Shapeways. And I'll show you some tricks of uh, how to set the material and so on. Okay, so here's our model. And uh, let's go in and see, see what's what. All right, so just to go through everything, we're going to turn on editing. That's over here. And now you can do all kinds of things to this model. Um, let's see, for starters, let's, uh, let's go change this to be for sale and whatnot. And all right, so there's that. Um, the other thing you can do is you can allow downloads. I always like to, unless you're really protecting your model. Um, let's see, and the next thing is is the tricky one, actually, is so we want to make sure that this one gets printed in full color sandstone, and that, that that's the default. Uh, this took me a while to figure out, actually, that you what you do is you hover over the material, and then there's this make default area here, and uh, you just click on that. Now it's the default material. And if you want to make that the only material that it's going to uh, print in, you just put do select only the default material. So now this thing will only print in that. A, um, a nice thing to do is to go down here and put in something like you know Minecraft or whatever as your, as your uh, keyword. And that's about it. Um, you can also do things like, you know, add some descriptive text here. And uh, anyway, that's about it. Those are sort of the mo most interesting things. Once you actually make the model, it's nice to uh, upload the photo of your model and uh, use that as the key model. But anyway, those are those are all the changes that I wanted to do. And uh, and now you can. Hmm, that didn't work correctly. Oh, ha! well, this is actually a very good uh, example of a little glitch in their interface, as far as I'm concerned. Um, let's do this again. So what I did was I selected this thing, made default. And I said, select only the default material. The key thing I forgot to do is click this sucker right here. So by doing that, that actually locks in your changes. Uh, you know, why Why you need to do that? Whatever. And same over here. I noticed that I did this and this, but I didn't click that all important button update. So once those things are all done, then we should see the model with the material and uh, for sale and all that kind of good stuff. So. It's for sale. That's the only thing you can buy it in. Uh, it's available for download, and there you have it.